Hi everybody, this is Gail of Giving Back with Gail, and today's vlog is all about ways you can honor a loved one through service. So today I'd like to tell you about four ways that I think um, would be a good start for you to honor someone you've lost through service. My life is all about service, as you know, and so it was a it just makes sense to be able to honor someone that I've lost through that act. And so I'm like, I know that I'm clearly not the only one who's lost someone who wants to do that. So I wanted to share with you today four ways that you can also honor someone that you've lost through an act of service, um, because I think it's a wonderful way to connect with their memory and also help connect with an organization that either reminds you of something that they've gone through, they went through, and or uh, is an organization you want to support so that others don't have to go through the same thing that your loved one went through. There's so many levels to it and layers to it, you know? So there's four ideas that I came up with. Number one, fundraise for a specific organization in their name. So for instance, when my grandmother was um, actually starting midway through her journey with Alzheimer's, my mom and I and my best friend, Steph, we all did the Alzheimer's walk together. And so part of the Alzheimer's walk is actually fundraising. And so I had the opportunity to send out emails and ask for fundraising to go along as we took our walk. And it's something really, there's something really nice about having people reach out to you and donate for your cause, you know? And so in addition to people um, donating, I decided to, because I'm also creative, I made a poster board and I made each person's like face on my poster board so that I can remember and I wrote their name underneath so that they could see everyone could see the people that honored me and, and honored my grandmother's journey by donating to my cause and so as we walked into the did the walk in California we had the poster board and we had the face of every single person that supported the journey on it and it was so wonderful and it's a wonderful you know visual reminder to your donators that how appreciative you are um, and so just a good example of, you know, ways that you can do it that way. So for me, it was all summer's walk asking for fundraising. And I did it, of course, in my grandmother's name. So number two, you can volunteer with an organization that is close to their heart. Um, so for example, if you've lost someone and they used to volunteer with Make-A-Wish all the time, that's a wonderful way for you to give back in their memory. You can connect with Make-A-Wish. Um, my brother actually, who I lost to leukemia, he I had a wish granted and so i have a, a really special place for make a wish in my heart so in that example it would go and like contact make a wish they've got wonderful ways for you to be um, to help them grant wishes and um, you can volunteer with that organization and do so in the name of your lost one your lost loved one excuse me number three I don't know if you've heard of these organizations, but they're card sending organizations. And so another third idea that you can do is find one of these card sending organizations that actually sends the people going through what your lost loved one might have gone through. So for example, if you've lost someone who had been going through breast cancer, you find a card sending organization that actually sends out cards to um, anyone who's actually going through the journey with breast cancer right now. And so you would then send a card, um, just encouraging that person, um, maybe adding like stickers or something fun for them to do, or just to kind of take their mind off of what they're going through as they're dealing with chemotherapy and you know balancing life and and staying healthy um, and it's just a lovely reminder that there are people out, out in the world who they don't even know who are thinking about them and championing for them and I think more often than not we because we live in such a digital world we forget like the the just the deliciousness of like a tactile experience sometimes you know but you actually physically get a a card in the mail and I know that we're so used to things being like bills and all that stuff, but there's something really, really nice when you get an unexpected card from someone that says, don't stop, keep going, you can do this. So again, the third option is find a card sending company um, and then you can actually, they'll tell you kind of the, the parameters of how it works for them and then you can write a letter um, and then you know send it to them and they'll send it to off to the people who need it most, which is really lovely. Um, or if you know someone who's going through some things that your, lost, your loved one went through, send them a card just directly saying, you know, um, I'm, I'm here for you if you need me. Um, I know this journey isn't easy. 
um, just ways to connect with someone who's going through things and you know it because you've been there um, with the person that you lost without necessarily mentioning the loss part at that point because that's not going to keep them going but just reminding them that you see them and you know they're going what they're going through and that you're there to champion their their health journey as much as you possibly can and then the final one that I would suggest is just ask friends and families to join an organization that's important to you and to what your loved one went through. So for example, um, this Friday would have been my brother's birthday and I am going to ask um, all of my family members and my friends to, and you, because you're part of my family now, to join the Be The Match organization. It is an organization that is, it's a, it's a connector between those who are in need of blood marrow, excuse me, bone marrow transplants and people who are happy to donate their bone marrow. So I actually was um, called for the first time after being on the registry for 20 years, 20 plus years actually, I was called for the first time and asked to donate potentially to a young girl. And I was so ready and I immediately said yes. And um, I went through the process. There's a phone screening process and then you go through the blood test and then they let you know like within 60 days whether or not you're a, um, a viable match and an option for that child, that person. And in my situation, I was not a, a, the match that was perfect for her. And so I was very grateful that she found someone else that could help her, but I was also just honored that that was potentially a match for her. And I was also really, really happy that I kept my information uh, up to date with Be The Match so that when they did call me, they were able to get directly to me. So that's something that also I'll remind people as well. When you do um, actually join with these organizations, make sure that you keep your information up to date so they can contact you, which is a whole point. You know, I think a large part of the problem for them sometimes is that they do reach out to people and phone numbers are different and addresses are different. So you can have a commitment, but if your information's not up to date, then you can't really stay true to that commitment, unfortunately, for those organizations. So um, again, contacting um, your friends and family and asking them to, to join an organization that's close to your heart and close to the journey that your loved one um, might have been going through before they passed on. Uh, like for instance, Be The Match makes sense for my, my brother's journey with leukemia and um, and his battle with, with, bone, with bone marrow. So for me, it's, it's a organization that's very close to my heart and I will very much be asking everyone that I know on Friday um, in his honor to join Be The Match and or to reaffirm their commitment if they're already a member to make sure their information is up to date and to reaffirm their commitment to it. Because you never know you're going to get the call. But when you do, it's going to be amazing and you can help save a life. And that's what this is all about. So those are the four ideas that I had in terms of ways to honor the person that you've lost through service. I really want this vlog to be a space of service for you as well. So I'm hoping that these four things that I, I shared with you mean something and will inspire you to go out and do them as a way of honoring the person that you lost. If you are inspired by this or you are going to try one of the things that I've, I've mentioned, I would love to hear about it. Um, comment below. You can shoot me an email. The information's all there as well and um, I will try to post that uh, within the video too. Um, I would really love to hear because I'm not just doing this for me. I really want to be a place of service for each and every one of you that's looking at this right now. Um, just to take care of some housekeeping stuff, I do have a new Wednesday segment that's called Why I Give Back Wednesdays and it's been a little hit or miss in getting people um, to be consistent with it so I'm just going to keep asking for it and when I get them, I get them and if I don't, I'll keep it moving. It's no big, it'll be okay. But if you are inspired to do so, please just send me a 60 second or less because of Instagram's um, parameters uh, with a video just saying why you give back. It's that simple. That's it. And I'll have the email again within the website and down in the comments section to make it easier for you. Um, and then, of course, I'd love for you to be part of the Instagram family. We are 1,600 strong and counting and growing, and I'm so excited. It's an amazing or amazing community that we've created all together of people doing good works on the planet. And it makes me feel good every single day to be part of it. Um, and I just want to see it grow and grow and grow as we step more into service as just kind of the, the go-to as opposed to a secondary thought. Like I think service should be our first thought all the time and thinking about um, just making the world a little better place, obviously.
And um, if you could also join my Facebook family and community, rather, um, Instagram we're taken care of. I've also got Twitter. You know, the, the basic trifecta of social media. Um, that would be great. But most importantly, uh, I would just love for you to subscribe here um, and then share and tell a friend. Um, and if there's somebody that I should be connecting with here on YouTube who's also of service and also about doing good, please let me know because there's one thing that I know for certain is that we're not doing any of this alone and when we do it together, it makes a much more powerful journey. And I'm excited to see how much good everybody does this, this week and the rest of the year. Um, I, I just can't wait to see all the good that happens. And I hope that the four things that I mentioned today, if something spoke to you and connected with you, that you feel free to share it with me, share it with me rather, because that will make my day. So thank you for watching. I hope that this was of service to you. I can't even tell you how much I hope that to be the case. And um, I, I would love it for you to like, let me know how it, if it is and share it if you feel so compelled. All right. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And I will see you right here. Same time, same back channel, maybe different times, depending on when I upload. <laughs> but it'll definitely be next Tuesday. That's my commitment to me and my commitment to you as a community. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me.